Hi, I'm Mike Gore and welcome to Bulldog Update. Today I'm joined by Aaron Sanders, UNC Asheville's Director of Athletics of Annual Giving. Aaron, thanks for being here. Well, thanks for having me, Mike. It's a pleasure. Aaron, this is your third year here at UNC Asheville Athletic Department, but it's your second job. Uh, the first position you, you had was running this building, and that must have been awful exciting to open a building. It was. Uh, it was It was a great experience for me. Uh, it was actually my second experience with opening a facility, uh, but uh, just, you know, I was so pleased to be involved with this project. It's a fantastic fantastic facility that's meant so much to the university as well as the athletic department. Talk about uh, hosting uh, the North Carolina Tar Heels, which we did uh, two years ago. I uh, had Janet Cohn on a, a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. and uh, and that was such a great experience hosting that game, but a lot of work went into that, didn't it, especially for you? Oh, it did. Uh, you know, combined with the fact that we had the number one team in the nation coming in at the time, uh, it was our, uh, you know, it was the first real major game and the first, first real test of the facility. So, uh, you know, not only were we putting the building through its paces, getting it ready for the general public, but we were also preparing for a major college basketball game. So it was a full-time job in itself. You know, it's interesting. The first year we had over 100,000 visitors to, uh, uh, to Kimmel Arena and the Wilma Sherrill Center. And not just for basketball games, obviously, for a lot of different events. It's pretty amazing how this building, so new, has brought in so many customers. It really is the front porch of the university. Uh, we've had events ranging from, of course, our own Bulldogs playing here, but we've also had a number of other athletic events, uh, community-oriented events, everything from the Citizen Times Half Marathon Sports Expo to uh, health careers, expos. Uh, concerts. It's really a broad range of events that can happen in this multi-purpose facility uh, in addition to the regular classroom and laboratory work that goes on in here as well. Now, now about a year ago you decided to change gears a little bit and decided to join the athletic department full-time in your new position here and just tell us why you decided to do that. Well, uh, you know, the athletic side of the house, that really appeals to my background. Uh, I have a master's degree in sports business, and before coming to UNC Asheville, I had worked for the New Jersey Devils, uh, as well as World Team Tennis. And when I saw the opportunity to work in the athletics department, and being a former student athlete myself, I really jumped at the opportunity. The building had been open for two years at that point. We'd been successful, and I was looking for a new challenge. Tell us about your background. It's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting and a varied one. Uh, you served in the military as well and fought in Afghanistan. And just tell us where you're from and the, the colleges you went to. Uh, well, I'm originally from upstate New York, a town called Schenectady. Uh, that's where Pat Riley is from as well. And I guess that might have been the first uh, inkling that I had an interest in working in sports. Uh, I was a student athlete myself, like I said, at Franklin and Marshall College. I played football until an injury ended that career. Uh, my undergrad finished up at uh, the University of New Mexico. Uh, I came back and, uh, to, New to New York, and uh, I went to New York University and completed, like I said, my master's in sports business. Uh, before that, though, I did serve eight years in the Army, uh, five years with the 82nd Airborne. I did a tour in Afghanistan in 2002. I was a combat engineer, uh, like we say, uh, master of all trades, uh, jack of all trades, master of none, actually, excuse me, but um, it, was, uh, it was quite an experience. And, you know, when I, when I got hurt in the Army and, and had a chance to start a second career, as I like to look at it, uh, I took a look at, you know, what really spoke to me, and that was my experiences in athletics and, and being part of that team-oriented uh, environment. And so uh, I went back to school and got my master's degree, and here I am. What was it like to work for the, uh, the New Jersey Devils? It's, it was fascinating. It was just an amazing experience, uh, you know, getting a chance to work for Lou Lamorello, who is a legend not only in the NHL and in hockey, but also in collegiate athletics from his time at Providence College, uh, was just an incredible experience. Uh, you know, he really uh, epitomizes what it means to be a, a, a sports professional uh, and a leader. And then, you know, working at World Team Tennis, uh, I got a chance to work for Billie Jean King. Wow. So really working for two amazing icons uh, gave me a lot of background and insight of what it takes to be a success in this industry. Now, tell us about, in your position, uh, the position you have now, what is your main focus? My main focus is generating funds for the Bulldog Athletic Association, which, whose purpose is really to generate scholarship funds for our student athletes. Uh, we have 198 student athletes, and uh, you know, according to NCAA rules, we could fully fund 132.7 scholarships. And right now we're at about 78. And so my job is to host special events as well as to lead the Bulldog Athletic Association annual fund drive, membership in the BAA, to help raise those funds to support our student athletes and give us a chance to recruit and retain the best students out there.
you know, we just had a special event, you know, with the Eddie, uh, with, with the Bulldog Athletic Association Golf Tournament, which honored Eddie Beaton by our longtime UNC Asheville basketball coach. How'd that go? That was a great event. Uh, we expanded the, the tournament itself to two days this year. We had a roast and toast on Monday evening where we honored Eddie and brought back a lot of the celebrities to go ahead and give him a, a good-natured ribbing and show our appreciation of him. The tournament itself was fantastic. We raised about $85,000. It's our biggest fundraising event. Uh, we had over 130 golfers, about 25 celebrities. Uh, just a fantastic two days of fun and uh, for a great cause. Now, coming up this week, we've got a wine gala at the Fresh Market, and, uh, and that's a chance for people to enjoy some great wine and a chance to support Bulldog, uh, Bulldog student athletes, isn't it? That's right. October 3rd, Thursday evening from 7.30 to 9.30, we'll be at the Fresh Market on Merriman Avenue here in town. Uh, it is our wine gala in conjunction with the Fresh Market. We haven't had one in a couple of years due to some changes that they had at the store itself, but it's a very popular event. Uh, it's a great chance to go ahead and sample some fantastic wines, enjoy some of the great food that they prepare in addition to those wines. And uh, anybody that attends gets a 15% discount at the end of the evening from the wines that are featured that evening. Uh, the tickets are $30, and you can purchase them online at uncabulldogs.com or call our box office at 258-7900. What other events uh, could possibly happen the, uh, this year to help raise money for those student athletes? Well, we uh, have confirmed that we'll be hosting our turn to play again this coming spring. That'll be in April. Uh, the tentative uh, semi-confirmed date right now is April 15th. We've got a great speaker, but I'm not going to reveal who it's going to be. Last year we had Marion Jones here. It was a fantastic event with about 300 people that attended. And it's nice to honor women and, and some of the various other uh, individuals and demographics that you know, we may not traditionally honor through some of our other events. It opens uh, us up to a new audience and, and hopefully brings some people in that may not be familiar with the program, but give them a chance to show what we're all about. One of the things that you've told me since you've been here is how much you've enjoyed working with our student athletes. I know in this in this new role you have, I know raising money for those scholarships for those student athletes really means a lot to you, doesn't it? It does. Um, you know, I, I played uh, in Division Three, but uh, you know, so there are no scholarships at that level. But I wouldn't have been able to attend without a, a grant. So I understand that uh, you know the financial need that a lot of these student athletes have, in, in addition to uh, you know being great athletes, is something that's very important to them. And this is one of the ways that they're they're able to go ahead and, and finance a college education is through their athletic and academic skills. So uh, it's important for me to be able to give back and, and to help uh, pay it forward to this generation of student athletes who could use a hand and as well as to make our program the best as it possibly could be. Uh, we have a fantastic school here. Uh, you know, Asheville is a destination location. So we've got everything going for us. Um, so, you know, being able to provide scholarships to student athletes to help make more people aware by our athletic success about what this university is all about. Um, that's, that's my mission and I take it very seriously. If someone wants to join the BAA, how do they do it? Well, there are a couple of ways. Uh, by purchasing season tickets, there's a requirement to join the BAA at, at, for the most of the seats. But if they'd like, they can give me a call. My number is 250-3858 or they can email me at asanders at unca.edu. Uh, or they can find out more information on uncabulldogs.com slash BAA. All right, Aaron Sanders, thank you so much for joining us today. That's Aaron Sanders, Director of Annual Giving for the UNC Asheville Athletic Department. We appreciate him stopping by today. We'll have more of Bulldog Update right after this. My name is Bobby Castro. I'm a junior at UNC Asheville. I'm a health and wellness promotion major. I'm also on the men's soccer team. I chose UNC Asheville because I knew it was a great place to get an education. Also, be able to focus on my academics and play soccer at the same time. Some honors I've received while I've been here are being on the 2012 Capital One Academic Team, 2012 Academic Team for the Big South, and also I was named the 2011 at Pizza Hut Athlete of the Week. The benefits of a liberal arts education to me is getting all the courses I wouldn't necessarily take if I went to a bigger school. One class that really surprised me was Humanities with Rob Burles. We were taught some defense moves in class and he actually did a demonstration with one of his trained guys with a sword and a spear. So I thought it was a really cool experience for me. I'm Bobby Castro and this is today's Liberal Arts.
Welcome to the Asheville Cross Country Carnival and a, a great day for the Bulldog Cross Country team. A beautiful day, but two first place finishes for UNC Asheville in this uh, in this carnival. Jesse, this has got to make you real happy. This is a this is a bigger field than last year when you finished first and second. This year you finish you get two first against a tougher field. Yeah, yeah, we did a good job. We gave the the ladies a Pacific Plan and the guys a Pacific Plan, and, and they stuck to it. Uh, did really good job. Uh, pleased with the turnout and a lot of good competition. A lot of good conference schools that were here also. Um, main competition was Western, so we were pretty excited to be able to, to beat them today. Yeah, we always like beating Western, don't we? Yes, we do. Andy Thornberg does a great job for you on the men's side. Talk about his performance today. Oh, he was great. He looked like a beast out there. He was out there just rolling, doing a good job. Uh, came up to me right after the race and was like, Coach, if you cut me loose, I could have won that race today. So I think he's going to have a lot more left in the gas tank when we actually cut him loose later on in the year. You talk about a game plan. It was especially evident on the women's side where we were, were on the first run through and stuff. We, you know, we kind of saw your your girls kind of in a pack and stuff. But then at the end, uh, uh, your girls broke out. And, of course, Melanie, uh, your fifth-year senior, Kulia's, uh finished second. It looks like you followed the plan pretty well. Oh, yeah, yeah. The women did a great job with it. Um, we followed it, I'd say, 99% of the way. So uh, we got a couple people that kind of got a little excited a little early and then kind of paid for it at the end. But that's okay. It's a like home crowd. They were excited, everything like that. But, yeah, they did a great job of sticking to the plan, um, just moving up through the group. And, and two, it was just awesome to see that many white jerseys kind of running around the whole course all together. So. Just talk about this meet. It really, it really has come a long ways uh, since last year and stuff. And just Asheville Christian Academy has done a great job hosting it. But just really exciting seeing all these people out here today, isn't it? Oh, it's, it's very exciting. I mean, that's kind of mine and Adam's goal is to get this meet to be really, really big. Uh, I would love to have you know bring out 30, 20, 30 college teams and and have them out here competing and stuff. And you know, throw it down. And it's a good, fast course. And all the comments I've gotten, everybody really loves it and loves the area, the set, and everything like that. So it's kind of what we did last year. Had a good turn a decent turnout last year and for the first time and then they all went back home we're talking about it so now we got more schools hopefully they go home and talk about it and we can get some more schools next year where do you think both teams are at this point in the season you're about halfway through yeah we're about where we need to be at um, the men's team is not as deep as they were on paper coming in we got a couple people that are hurt a couple people that are coming back and stuff um, but I think they'll be good as long as we don't get anybody else that gets hurt or sick or anything like that women's team I mean they're they're plugging along they're right kind of where they're at both teams really are where we need them to be at this particular point um, we have the preview meet next week so we'll go there kind of check out the course and then me and Adam can kind of sit down the rest of the semester and uh, figure out the game plan for the conference meet and see what we can do there All right, Jesse congratulations thanks You sometimes take the long route just to see what you might discover. If you enjoy finding the art in science and the science in art. If you want to design a career and not just find a job. If you won't give up until you figure it out, then we have just the place for you. University of North Carolina, Asheville. UNC Asheville hosted the first ever men's soccer invitational at Greenwood Field this past weekend. UNC Asheville took on Howard and Georgia Southern at the events. For UNC Asheville, Emil Gonzalez scored in the 85th minute to lead UNC Asheville to a 2-1 victory over Howard on the first day. The Bulldogs and Bison played more than 70 minutes of scoreless soccer before the teams combined for three goals in a 12-minute span. The home team had opened the scoring at 73-35 when Quentin Reynolds notched his second goal of the season off a perfect pass from Hans Lohmeyer for a 1-0 Bulldog lead. Howard struck eight minutes later when Frederick Todd III hit in a perfect pass from Raman Alarape at 81-44. The match was tied at one goal apiece and it looked like it was headed to overtime before Stabler Cochran was able to corral a ball in the box and passed it into Gonzalez, who tucked it into the back of the net for a 2-1 Asheville lead at 85-07. In the second game of the Invitational for UNC Asheville, Georgia Southern's Eric Dinka scored in the second half, and that goal stood up as Georgia Southern edged homestanding UNC Asheville in the final game of the Asheville Invitational Sunday afternoon at Greenwood Field. 
Georgia Southern controlled play for much of the game, but had to withstand some furious Bulldog challenges in the final minutes. Asheville had two great chances late. Hans Lohmeyer was just high on a shot from 20 yards out with three minutes left. And Kenneth Langerfield's header with 45 seconds left off a corner was stopped by Georgia Southern goalkeeper Neil Bates. UNC Asheville moves to 3-4-0 in the season with the win and the loss. For Bulldog Update, I'm Matt Pellegrin. That's going to do it for Bulldog Update. I'm Mike Gore. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you next week.